Hi, Paul Donovan here, avtechnician.ca, your channel for tips and tricks for AV technicians. Welcome back for another video. We're continuing our discussion of OBS. Please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to comment. We really appreciate your comments. So OBS Studio is a free program, community supported, completely free. You can download it at www.obsproject.com. Feel free to download it now and install. There you go. You did it. You interrupted me. You paused me and there you go. You got it. Oh, never mind. I'm being silly. <laughs> okay. So we've already finished eight parts associated with OBS, but I want to use uh, OBS for recording Zoom. Now this is a tool that will probably pop up in your in your environment about you know what you're doing. And so I would suggest we spend a little time reviewing it. This is the ability to do a recording in Zoom. Okay, you're saying, Paul, Zoom has its own recording capability. Why would I need to record in OBS? I'm glad you asked that question. Shows so you're paying attention. All right. Have you ever looked at a video associated with what, what an OBS recording looks like? I'm going to teach you a way to record Zoom that increases the likelihood that your client is going to be happier with you and be happy that you've done this. And it really is not that complicated. Now, let me explain. First off, let's take a, a, a look here at what a host view of Zoom looks like. All right, here's the host view of Zoom. And if you were to translate this into the actual recording that Zoom records, you've got the big window that's got um, uh, the, the PowerPoint in it. See the big window? And up in the corner is a little tiny camera where you can barely even see me. See? I'm waving. Yeah. yeah. You can barely see the part person who's doing the speaking. You have no control on that size and position in the, in the Zoom recording. And this is the reason why I'm going to introduce to you the idea of recording in OBS to create a much nicer looking video. I have tried to explain this to my boss. He doesn't get it because he's not big on customer service. But I better be careful in case he watches this video. Anyway, the thing is, is that you want the customer to be happy. That video recording that Zoom does is perfectly adequate. Most people are so used to that's the video they got to get. When you give them a video that looks different, you are such a nice guy. And you really don't have to do an awful lot more depending on how much gear and equipment you have at your venue and what you've been provided by your AV company. So let's take a look. I'm going to flip back to my main screen so that you can see my face. Okay, here's the setup, okay? Your main computer is currently running Zoom, and your main computer may be doing a couple of other things. It's probably quite busy doing Zoom. It's probably got a video capture card capturing the camera shot. It's probably got another capture card capturing the PowerPoint. It's got many things going on, and it's quite busy. But it can't record the Zoom in anything other than the format that I just mentioned. So what I do is I go and I set up a computer over or beside me and I set up a bit another computer to run OBS and I set that computer up to be logged into Zoom as an attendee not as a host not as a co-host not as a presenter but as an attendee and it doesn't matter whether it's a Zoom meeting or is that webinar you just sign in as an attendee and that will give you a picture that looks something like, let's see what you can end up seeing. Let's see what you end up seeing. So first off, what you'll end up seeing is something that looks vaguely like this. Now, when I set my laptop up, I also set it up with a second monitor. And this is necessary. Well, I guess you could get away with doing it in one monitor, but not quite as pretty. I like doing it in two monitors. So here you see both of my monitors available, okay? On the left side is the uh, second monitor and it's running, it's carrying the zoom. And the right side is my primary monitor on my laptop and it's running OBS. And I'm showing you now not in, not in preview mode. So I'm gonna take you there. So now we've got it there. So the zoom screen looks like this. 
All right, the zoom screen looks like this and notice what it looks like, okay? The zoom screen looks, I hope this is what you're seeing. Yes, it is. The zoom screen looks like this. It has all the same things associated with zoom, but you're running it in, um, what do you call it? You're running it as a second screen. And all you do is you just drag it over to your second screen, fill it up so it's on full screen, and now you have this set up. Now, if you don't have this side-by-side -side view, then you should be double-checking that you have set up your Zoom uh, client. And where's my mouse gone? My mouse has disappeared. Oh, there we go. So let's go into settings, and you go here on screen share, and you'll see this thing that says side-by-side. -side. So you set this stack thing up side-by-side, -side, and this will make sure that you have the ability of doing this. So here you're looking at the standard Zoom as an attendee. And you have the ability now, if you can grab this bar, just dividing the two. Hey, you bet you your eyes are going, wow, I didn't know I could do that. Are you wowed? Are you amazed? Yes, you can now make the PowerPoint smaller and the camera bigger. Likewise, you can go the other way. And depending on what the client is, feels is more important depends on how big you make them. Uh, personally, I like to see them side by side like this. You know, PowerPoint's equal size to the camera. But a lot of presenters and a lot of clients prefer to have, still have the PowerPoint large and the camera smaller, but not tiny like we see in the Zoom recordings. So this is very handy. Now, this vision is so much easier to record. And so also what you want to do is here in the chat section, click on the little arrow beside chat and make sure that this is unchecked. Because when someone sends a chat message, here, I'll turn that back on and I'll send a chat message. Turn that back on and I will send a chat message. I go, hello. And notice what happens, you see? you have a little pop-up display that will end up in your recording and you don't want that to happen. So what you do is you go into the chat arrow beside it and you turn off this. It doesn't matter if there's a red mark or not. It doesn't matter. It's okay. We don't mind. But what happens is no longer than somebody sends a chat message does it pop up here. So when you have your recording, you don't have things popping up in the middle that shouldn't be showing. Now you can't do much about the toolbar across the bottom because it'll come and go depending on its mood. Uh, but I mean, a lot of times, most of us, we do uh, post-production work on our stuff, post-edit. What I call the slice and dice, you take the video recording, you take off some of the crap at the beginning, you take off some of the crap at the end. Maybe you've had a Q&A session, you take that off. Uh, maybe in the middle of the session, the, the speaker made some mistakes and you want to cut that section out. So I do the slice and dice thing for my clients and I send, give them back a video recording that is so much nicer. And I make sure, of course, my OBS is set to give nice quality videos and I end up making life so much more beautiful. So you do this, okay? And you are, when you do your recording, you're gonna have the E, 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 E main display. And you see there, that's the main display. You hit record, make sure you get everything set up and both screens and there you see you've got a situation where you can now make an OBS recording of Zoom which is a nicer video recording than what Zoom will provide you and assuming you have the second computer already on site for whatever reason uh, <laughs> you're away to the races you get everything you could possibly want and more all right let me transition back here there we go so you have really got opportunity here to upsell a service that may have not been there and to make your customer happy. Now that's my motive in life is to always have happy customers. And so we try my best to do a video recording that is less troublesome and less difficult. So, very short video. Now for me, it's a short video. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave me a thumbs up if you think this was a good video. Uh, don't forget to leave comments. I do like to receive them. Well, there we go. I'm Paul, the avtechnician.ca, tips and tricks for AV technicians. I always am doing videos and trying to keep this channel active and growing. Please 
come back again. And thanks today for watching. Bye-bye.